Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, and thank you so much to Principal James uh, for hosting us in your incredible school. We really appreciate it. Um, I am Jessica Rauch, the President and Executive Director of the DC Public Education Fund. Hello. Um, so, oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and this is why we have students here today. Um, since 2007, the DC Ed Fund has raised over $90 million to support the most innovative initiatives in DC public schools, from human capital to blended learning to literacy strategies. Today, I'm thrilled to announce a new investment that will enable DC public schools to build upon the incredible efforts already underway in schools across the city, just like this one. Bloomberg Philanthropies and the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation have committed $4 million to support, I know, $4 million. That's a, that's a lot, right? <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. $4 million to support DC Public Schools' newest curricular strategy, Cornerstone Assignments, which will transform teaching and learning in every DCPS classroom. On behalf of the Board of Directors and staff at the DC Public Education Fund, I want to take a moment to thank Bloomberg Philanthropies and the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation for their commitment to the progress DCPS is making and for their investment in the students and educators of our city. And now I have the honor of introducing Mayor Muriel Bowser. Thank you. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Thank you, thank you. It is always good to be at Lecky Elementary School. So I want to thank uh, your principal. I want to thank all the teachers and staff here, boys and girls, for uh, preparing you so well every single day. Uh, and you know what? The chancellor is talking about your school all over the city. So keep doing great work, okay? Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> I also uh, want to thank Jessica and acknowledge Mark Ein, who is here. Give Mark Ein a big round of applause. Mark has uh, chaired our public education, DC Public Education Fund for seven years, eight years? A long time. Uh, and I, I want to thank you, Mark, for your leadership um, because it certainly takes uh, people who are committed as we are to the goals of improving our schools to go out uh, to our private community and say, hey, this is what the government is doing. In private community, we need your help too. And I couldn't be more delighted to, to be here with the Chancellor of Schools, Kaya Henderson. Let's say hi to Ms. <laughs> Chancellor. And the Deputy Mayor for Education, Ms. Jennifer Niles. Give her a big round of applause. Uh, in celebrating, in celebrating a big private gift. We heard Ms. Rauch talk about that gift, right? Four million dollars, uh, which is a gift to our public education fund, which is going to allow the chancellor to go above and beyond what we even expected that we could do this year because of that gift. So let me tell you what we, we've committed to uh, in this budget, um, that this $4 million is going to help us build on. $27.7 million in increased enrollment investments in our public schools this year. $1.3 billion to modernize our elementary, middle, and high school facilities over the next six years. $1.5 million to expand career exploration, paid work experiences, or jobs, self-advocacy training, and work readiness training for high school students with disabilities, and $400,000 to expand the community schools model, which I promised a lot of people, uh, by providing non-instructional wraparound services to school children and their families to help them succeed. So we've made great progress in investing in our schools and in reforms um, and preparing our, our teachers and staff and supporting our principals principles, uh, but we know that we still 
want to challenge ourselves every single day uh, to do more. And we can't do it alone. Uh, that is why I'm so, so grateful uh, for these wonderful gifts from Bloomberg Philanthropies and the Charles and Lynn Schusterman Family Foundation uh, for being involved in a big way uh, in DC Public School Education Fund. Uh, so we know, and I'm looking forward to the Chancellor explaining how Cornerstone Assignments uh, will be a terrific resource for teachers um, that will ensure that all boys and girls have exciting, rigorous content, exciting, robust, rigorous, challenging, right? That sounds good. That's good for school, right? Uh, and when you do this, you will be deep, critical thinkers who are curious about the world, who love learning. Uh, you'll be able to go on to college and great careers, have good paying jobs, so you can raise your own families right here in D.C. Uh, and I know that the chancellor is counting on Brian Pick, who is the chief of teaching and learning for our public schools. Uh, I think when, when I introduce you, that means you're accountable. Uh, you're accountable. So boys and girls, I want you to meet a, a member of our team that's going to work with Chancellor Henderson and work with Deputy Mayor Niles to make sure we're putting this wonderful gift to good use. Brian. No pressure, right? <laughs> good morning, lucky third graders. Good morning. And good morning, families and friends of DC Public Schools. Um, I'm excited today to announce the DC Public Schools Cornerstone Assignment Initiative. What is a cornerstone? Well, it builds on the great work that our teachers have been doing over the past four years to have a rigorous and robust Common Core aligned curriculum. These are units of study that challenge our students, help them think, and reach the goals of college and career readiness. Cornerstones are about bringing excellence and equity to the district. When I say excellence, I mean the best content, the best novels and books, real-world math problems, thought-provoking social studies and science content, labs, the best PE, art, music, and health lessons. They're about engaging our, our students in world-class materials and setting the bar for what we expect students to know and be able to do. The cornerstone assignments are not just good for our students. They're great for our teachers as well. We already have signed up over 100 cornerstone developers, DCPS teachers who are committed to dedicating their summer to refining, enhancing, and building the cornerstone assignments. They're also great for our teachers because they modeled the best professional development. When I taught fourth grade, I learned the most from other fourth grade teachers talking about what their students were learning in fourth grade. And through the professional learner communities that we will set up across this district, third grade teachers working with third grade teachers, biology teachers working with biology teachers, these teachers will engage in some of the best professional development of their careers. And finally, this is about the expectations we hold for our students. Each cornerstone assignment, over 200 across grades K through 12 in all subject areas, will require a student work product or performance. Students creating, making, showing what they know to our city. And finally, this is a, an amazing opportunity to partner with some of the great community organizations and partners in the city. We're able to line up the in-class experiences with the out-of-school opportunities in a way that we've never been able to do before. We can communicate with our families and help them help their children succeed in our schools. So I want to thank, add to the, the mayor's thanks to the Bloomberg Foundi Philanthropies and uh, the Schusterman Foundation for their support and, and their, 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 their visioning with us in this important work. We have great things uh, ahead, um, and I I'm looking forward to reporting back to you uh, mayor next year about the success of this initiative and how we're going to make it better for years on. Thank you all very much and thanks for being here today. I'd like to introduce to you now uh, our Chancellor Kaya Henderson, Chancellor of DC Public Schools. I'm kicking it over instead to the host of today's event, Atasha James, the principal here at the great Lecky Elementary School. So, as 
as a school leader on the front line, recruiting parents and families to make the decision to put their babies in DCPS, Cornerstones really make it so that no matter what school a parent decides to go to, we can ensure the same quality citywide. And what that means is that no matter if you're what school you decide to go to, you have the best option. And that's what discerning parents look for. They want the best for their babies. And this is a step in the right direction to make sure that every DCPS school is the best choice for our District of Columbia students and families. And what you should know is that this third grade class sitting here right now is, in fact, the best third grade class in the city. So please give those students a round of applause. In terms of equity, we know that we have the best teachers in the District of Columbia, hands down. When we are able to tap into what teachers know to unpack their thinking, we raise the floor and we break the ceiling on what's possible with our students. And so for that reason, this is the best opportunity for me to retain the best and the brightest because they get to show what they're made of and they get to show the impact in the students' work. And so thank you to this foundation. Your money is well spent. Thank you so much. Good morning, boys and girls. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kaya Henderson, and I'm the chancellor of DC Public Schools. Um, I want to tell you a little story about how Cornerstones came to be. So does anybody know what my job is? I told you I'm the chancellor of DC Public Schools. What do you think my job is? Yes, ma'am. To take care of what? Huh? To take care of the mayor? Actually, she takes care of me. <laughs> She's my boss. But that's a good guess. What do you think my job is? Yes. Amen, brother. Yes, that is my job. I am the boss of all of the principals in DCPS. Yes, you want to add to that? I think your job is to be like, to make sure every school in the District of Columbia. Come on, brother. Yes, yeah, say it. To be safe for students to learn. Not just safe, but what else? Yes, sister, to be excited for what they're going to do. What else? Yes, to have all the equipment that they need. What else? Yes. Hey, look, we're going to put a period on it right there. Yes, to have the education that they need. My job is to make sure that all of the students in the District of Columbia Public Schools have an excellent education, that schools are safe, that teachers and other educators have the supplies that they need, that kids get a great education, that it's fun and they want to come to school every day. And that's part of what we're talking about today. We want to make sure that you all have the best education possible. And this new initiative is going to help us do that. Um, a couple of years ago, three years ago, four years ago, four years ago now, um, we decided that it's not okay to let every single school just decide to teach what they want to teach. That was a problem for some people. But at the end of the day, if we're going to guarantee a certain level of quality to our families across the city, it means that we have to buckle down and be sure about what we're teaching. And so we implemented a curriculum that was aligned to the Common Core Standards, Common Core State Standards, which are rigorous academic standards that prepare our young people for college and career. On the first day of school this year, I was out visiting schools as I do, and I was pleased to see our teachers implementing this new curriculum. It's a good curriculum. It's designed by Pearson? No. By McGraw-Hill? No. It's designed by DCPS teachers. Every summer for the last four years, we've engaged DCPS teachers in developing this robust curriculum so that it works for our kids, the young people that we serve. And I was pleased to see teachers implementing this curriculum. But on the first day of school in a first grade classroom east of the river, I saw one teacher using a particular lesson to just review the sounds of the alphabet, right? And I saw another teacher west of the park using the same lesson to teach her first graders how to write essays. Now, when you think about two different teachers teaching the same lesson in such very different ways, it made me recognize that even though we have a curriculum that is standard across the district, we have a problem. We have a problem because not everybody has the same expectations about what our young people can do. And what we know about all of our young people is when we set high expectations for them, they rise to the occasion. 
And so I went back to my team and said, look, how are we going to make sure that every single teacher in the district is teaching the essay writing lesson, not the reviewing the alphabet lesson, right? How are we going to ensure equity of academic rigor? How are we going to make sure that every single one of our babies are pushed to their limit so that they can achieve and excel? And my team said, uh, okay, give us a little bit to work on. <laughs> and they went back and they came up with these cornerstone assignments. And the idea is that over the course of the year, every single first grade teacher will teach four lessons. Now, they'll teach a whole lot of lessons over the course of the year, but they will teach four that every single first grade teacher in the district will teach at the same time. They will be designed by our very best first grade teachers, our most highly effective teachers, the people who are demonstrating this depth of academic rigor, and will professionally develop teachers before they do the lessons so that they know exactly how deep they need to go and that they have multiple ways to teach the lessons. And then they'll go and they'll teach. And the lessons are engaging. They're not asking kids to simply recite. They're asking kids to do. They're asking kids to demonstrate. They're asking kids to show what they know around engaging topics, topics that help tap into our communities, topics that help tap into the city, topics that are relevant for the world today when so many of our young people don't get the connection between school and the world. These lessons are about equity of academic rigor. These lessons are about offering our young people a broad and diverse curriculum. These lessons are pushing teachers and students to deeper levels of teaching and learning. That's what we're about at DC Public Schools. It's a different approach to professional development. It's teachers in peer-to-peer -peer professional learning communities growing their instructional practice as professionals anchored around student learning. That's something that our union friends should be here celebrating with us about, right? But instead, they're on the other side of town focused on silly adult issues that don't have anything to do with D.C. public schools. Where are we? Where's the leadership of this city? The leadership of this city is here. While they're pushing against thoughtful legislation, we're standing here today pushing for a more thoughtful approach to ensuring a world-class education for our young people. Thank you. This $4 million investment is incredibly important. It demonstrates that people all over the country, Bloomberg Philanthropies is located in New York, the Schusterman Family Foundation is, all, is located in Oklahoma. It, it, it demonstrates that people all over the country, including one of the most successful big city mayors and one of the smartest education philanthropists in the country, recognize that DCPS is leading the nation in changing how we educate our young people. They know that we have a long way to go, right? We're not where we want to be. But this $4 million investment means that they are betting on us. They are betting on DCPS. They are betting on you, Mayor Bowser. We got Part of the reason why we got this is because we followed the Bloomberg model when we moved to mayoral control of the schools, and it is paying off, right? They believe that even though we have a long way to go, that we are the ones who will get there, and they want to be part of our success. That's new for us. But even more than that, they are betting that our work, the work that we do on these cornerstone assignments, will be replicated all over the country. In fact, a condition of this grant was that we share it with other school districts because they believe that since we're the fastest improving urban school district in the country, they think we can and will lead the nation in providing all of our students with a world-class education. We think so, too, and we're proud of the fact that they are betting on us. I want to thank my boss, the mayor, for her um, incredible support. Um, she has been amazingly supportive, and um, as I said, part of the reason why we got this is because they are pleased that we are continuing the work that we started after we went to see what was going on in New York. Um, and even though things have gone slightly differently in New York. We're staying the course. <laughs> we are staying the course. I want to thank the DC Public Education Fund. Um, they are the incredible partners who fund all of our cockamamie ideas. Um, they've raised over a hundred million dollars in the last eight years that allow us <clears throat> that allow us to do innovative work. Um, and so I want to thank 
Jessica and Mark uh, and the entire board at the Public Education Fund. I want to thank my team. I have one of the most creative, innovative teams. They aren't afraid to take risks. They know that we got to go hard every single day for them. Um, and at a time when every single school district in the country would like to steal my people, they stay here. They stay here because they believe in the work that we're doing. And so I, my hat goes off to my team. I work for them. They just make me look good. Um, and finally, to the Bloomberg Philanthropies and the Schusterman Foundation, um, I just want to say to them that um, it's a well-placed bet, and we will deliver because um, we are winners. So thank you. We have a few minutes for questions. If the chancellor wants to come back up, the mayor, Brian Pick, and Principal James. Go ahead. Yes? Chancellor, zero to 10, how do you rate the importance of school food uh, for a uh, learning environment for these kids? So I think school food is really important. Happy to talk about that at some other point since the Today's uh, event is about academics, not about food, but it's very important. What about the Charlwell's uh, settlement last week? Can you speak to the allegations? As I said, I'm happy to talk about food uh, at a different time. I'm happy to see you afterwards, but I want to keep this focused on academics. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I want to say good morning, everybody, especially to the babies. I'm, it's an honor to be here. Ms. Chancellor, good to see you. Good to see you, Ms. Douglas. Also, uh, the mayor. I just want to say you all did a great job. Because when I was a state board of education four years ago, we were going to help support and work with you to get the uh, 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 Common Core standards. And so I can see the successful since I've uh, been off of uh, state board of education. I just want to say that we really worked hard to make sure that this happened. And so thank you and all of this. Uh, and I want to thank the state board for their leadership. They took a stand on the standards. You see people flip-flopping all across the country, but we were early and we were unequivocal about setting high standards for our young people. And so I want to thank the state board of education. Join me in giving them a hand for being visionary in this. Curriculum be taught in, in charter schools as well as public schools, or how does that work? In fact, no, we are only traditional public schools, DC public schools, but we're happy when we finish with these assignments to make them available much more broadly. And if some of our charter partners want to take advantage of our work, we're happy to share it with them. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Carol Christmas with the Hill Foster Grandparent Program, and we've been betting on you for a long time. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for your partnership. We're active in many of the public schools, and I was just curious about the role of volunteers in helping you to implement this curriculum. Yep. Do you want to talk a little bit about the role sure. that different community members are yeah, this, this city has no shortage of great partners and volunteers. Um, we have been working with our literacy initiative, um, namely bringing in, in reading tutors, for instance. So we'll continue that work. But the cornerstones are even more powerful because now we, have, we can match the right people with the right content for the right kids. And we have more entry points at this point uh, to, to help uh, volunteers match on the right things for our schools. Church right down the street from here. And Principal James, I want to, our pastor wants us to adopt a class from here. So I'm looking forward to meeting with you so that we'll be able to do that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take one more question. I'm going to take a question from our young lady. Yes, ma'am. How do I think the kids in this school are doing? Oh my gosh, I'm going to pay you your paycheck after this. <laughs> I just have to take a minute to brag about, the mayor said at the beginning, I go all over the city and I tell people how amazing kids at Lecky are. In fact, we had over 100 new kids at Lecky here this year. You know what that means? That means that people are seeing your smiling faces and seeing how smart you are, and they want their kids to come to Lecky too. So thank you for being great advertisers for us. And your test scores are going up, and you have smiles on your faces, and people are so happy here that I heard from the fifth graders at Lecky, and they were very sad that they were graduating. Is graduation supposed to be sad? No. no. It's supposed to be happy, exactly. I'm taking her to work with me. Um, <laughs> 
It's supposed to be happy. But why do you think these fifth graders at Leckie might have been sad that they were graduating? Yes, yellow shirt. Oh, because they missed the school and how quiet it was. Absolutely. They were like, we love our school. We miss our school. We don't want to go to another school. And so Principal James and I hatched a little plan. And next year, we're actually going to have a sixth grade at Leckie. So you don't have to go anywhere. The fifth graders can stay. And we'll grow a seventh grade and an eighth grade. So you could actually be here all the way through eighth grade. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Give a hand for that. I think Leckie is one of the, okay, hold on, hold your questions. I think Leckie is one of the great success stories of D.C. public schools. Just a few years ago, um, people were fleeing the school. Um, people didn't have confidence in what was going on here. And I want to take my hat off to Principal Latasha James. Um, she has been an incredible leader here at Leckie, not only ensuring that, amen, <laughs> Not only, look, when the kids say, yeah, you know you're telling the truth. Um, not only ensuring that our young people have uh, reach high academic standards and have an engaging experience here, but developing and growing teachers and leaders, wrapping her arms around families and making Leckie a real school that is for and about this community. And we're working at Central Office to ensure that every single school has a leader like Atasha James and that every single school has great success the way Leckie does. So you all are one of the models that we're trying to follow. And I want to say thank you and congratulations for all your great work. Come on up, let's take a picture. I neglected to um, acknowledge our ANC commissioners who are here, and I wanted to do that. I see Commissioner Charles Lindsay, so good to see you, Commissioner. Um, is Commissioner Paul Trantham still here? There's um, Paul in the back. And I think I saw our state board member, Tierra Jolly, from Ward 8, uh, and we want to thank you uh, for your leadership as well. Um, and I think our, our third grade teacher is here. Where's her teacher? Thank you, teacher. Your children are excellent. Uh, they are uh, attentive and bright and smiling and smart, um, and they are a credit to this school and this community. So thank you all very much.